Dolphins fans, how are we feeling today? It is Ben Morgan of the Fins Up Network, back with a training camp report from day 10 of on-field action for your Miami Dolphins. Actually, the final practice before we finally get to hit guys on another team because the Dolphins host the Atlanta Falcons for a pair of joint practices. That'll be Tuesday and Wednesday. I believe they'll have an off day on Thursday before the preseason opener on Friday. And I don't know about you, but I am pretty jacked for a preseason football game. And I know a lot of people don't get all that excited for preseason football, especially when you're going to see the list of players that like are going to be inactive or are not going to be shown the field on Friday for that game. Regardless, that's going to take a little bit away from it. Regardless, I'm always going to have my list of like the rookies, some of the roster bubble guys that we're going to be keeping an eye on. So stay tuned. We'll be back with practice reports from the joint practices, obviously previewing and recapping that preseason game as well. But today we've got to jump into day 10 from training camp. Right before we do, I got to hear from you, your thoughts on Dolphins training camp. Any questions you have for me, go ahead and drop them in the comments. If you haven't gotten subscribed yet, make sure you are doing that as well. Dolphins fans, let's kick things off with a little bit of talk about quarterback one. To a tongue of Iloa because he hit a rollout pass to Tyreek Hill for 10 yards, and he followed it up with what a lot of people are saying is probably one of the offensive highlights of training camp so far. And we actually have a video highlight from the Dolphins social media team, but it's Tua hitting Tyreek for 50 yards. Quite a few air yards on that. They actually flipped the camera around as well, so you get it from a different angle. That'll be coming up in a second. Nice throw, nice catch, and props to the Dolphins social media team for finally zooming out on a deep pass. I think all of last year and then so far this offseason, every single shot is always them zoomed in on it, so you can never really see exactly the, the trajectory from quarterback to wide receiver. So, I know a lot of us fans are pretty pumped that that we got a little wide angle on that one. Regardless, nice completion there from Tua to Tyreek. Um, Tyreek also actually began practice. I think it was the first play of practice with a completion from Skylar Thompson. Speaking of Tyler, Skylar Thompson, I was told that the Miami Dolphins coaching staff currently has Skylar Thompson out playing Mike White. Now, I don't necessarily know that that means he's going to switch on the depth chart. But it's been pretty apparent to the coaching staff that Mike White is going to have to step his game up. And he probably knows that as well. Regardless, it's not probably uh, uncommon to think that the Miami Dolphins coaching staff isn't happy with the backup quarterback situation the way it is right now. Unfortunately, with teams rostering as many players as they are right now, being able to find a backup quarterback is a little bit easier said than done. Keep your eye on in the event of one of these veterans potentially getting released at some point in time, Miami might come sniffing around on someone like that. Like I said, that's further down the line. We'll see how things play out with training camp with the remainder of preseason. Regardless, the team is not all that thrilled with their backup quarterback situation. Uh, the Dol Dolphins did some uh, red zone situational drills. We'll get to two as towards the end of the video, but Skylar Thompson's unit didn't score during his team. Um, the final play was broken up by Storm Duck. However, he did have two completions to Jaquan Burton during that drill. Uh, Skylar Thompson on the day also hit Braylon Sanders on a nice catch and Willie Sneed. Both of those were 20 yard completions during team drills. Mike White during his red zone situation drill did score a touchdown. He hit Jody Fortson. Um, he ended up, Jody Fortson caught two passes on that drive. The touchdown came on a nice back shoulder ball against Channing Tindall. So maybe that that talking to from the coaches to Jordy Fortson that we hit, I think it was on the last video. Maybe that's working. If you missed that one, go back. Like I said, we've done a recap for all of these training camp videos. Like I said, we'll get the two of us here um, towards the end of the video. But in regards to the wide receivers, Jalen Waddle did not practice today. However, I was also told today he is taking time after every single practice to catch 200 balls every single practice. And now making that even better is the fact that Devon Achan is joining him after he had a few drops last week. But it's great to see that these guys aren't scared to put a little bit more time in after practice. And you know what? If they've got something that they've been they've been lacking or they need to work on, they're not scared. They don't want to be the weak spot, the, the scapegoat on this team. They want to put in that work 
and get it done. So congrats and props, I should say, to Waddle and Achan for saying, you know what, we got to get better with our hands. We got to get more consistent catching this ball. Let's go ahead and do it. And we've already seen some return from Jalen Waddle, who's been catching everything during these training camp practices. Uh, River Craycraft caught a 25-yarder from Tua on a play where Tua carried out the run fake, reset, got the hips in place, put it on Craycraft with a dart for the completion. And then the exact next play, Tua lofted one, a shot play down the sideline, hit Alec Ingold for a 30. And then Braxton Berrios was uh, credited with a 20-yard contested catch from Mike White. On to the tight end, some interesting news here. Julian Hill noted once again for getting it done today, specifically in the department of blocking. He was noted early in practice for three separate plays where he won his block, cleared out his defender on the play. And quite honestly, the way that a guy like Julian Hill has been playing, specifically in that role as a blocker, it may be interesting to see if he could unseat a guy like Durham Smythe for some of those snaps, because I think we would all say that Johnu Smith is your, your tight end one, especially when it comes to the passing department. And where Durham Smythe has been kind of that de facto blocking tight end, could a guy like Julian Hill, who's a former undrafted free agent, he's going to be a little bit cheaper. Could that be an option that they maybe kick the tires on here a little bit with more snaps, try to invest in him on the future? We will see. Offensive line, just a quick note on Robert Jones, noted for a solid block against Zach Sealer that sprung. Uh, Devon A. Chan for 10-plus in the run game. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball, Tier Tart beat Chasen Hines for a sack on Skylar Thompson, and Brandon Peely sacked Mike White on the final play of practice. Moving on to the linebackers, Mike McDaniel hit on this during his media availability. Jordan Brooks, Anthony Walker, and then Jordan Poyer, obviously, in a safety. Been held out a little bit here recently, held out again today with some minor injuries. Mike McDaniel didn't seem overly concerned about any of them. Based on what we've seen from this team's coaching staff the last, ever since Mike McDaniel has been here, playing it safe, taking it a little bit easy with them. We don't want to suffer any more injuries in training camp. Remember back to last year? I was texting a buddy about this. Last year in training camp, we lost Jalen Ramsey on like day two. Jalen Waddle got dinged up in a joint practice. Teron Armstead went down right away. That is three horses to lose right away in training camp and not outright lose in every sense, but to have dinged up and then have injuries that ended up just lingering throughout the year in, in a case like Jalen Waddle. Well, we haven't been flawless this year. Obviously, Cam Smith had his injury, but comparing this training camp so far, to how the last training camp went so far, we're doing pretty decent in the injury department. Knock on wood, I shouldn't have put that into the universe. Regardless, that's just kind of my feelings on that. Quinton Bell, you cannot go a practice report without hearing or talking about this guy at this point. He was the team's orange jersey wearer today, had another quarterback pressure today as well. One thing also that I was told earlier today was that the play right now that we're seeing from these edge rushers has pushed Grayson Murphy, who we said is kind of in line to maybe be the, the, the undrafted free agent and has the best shot of making this team's 53-man roster. He kind of pushing him a little bit to the roster bubble, and that's no indication or, or slight to Grayson Murphy and his performance. It has nothing to do with that. It's with how well these other guys are doing with Chop Robinson looking the part, with Kamara, who made more great plays today, making splash plays in every single practice, with Quinton Bell coming on here and being one of this team's best edge rushers, with Jalen Phillips' rehab going as well as it has, and with him potentially being closer to being ready for that early part of the season. So obviously, probably a little too early to tell still, but something to watch here as we get closer to that first preseason game. We'll wrap things up with the secondary. Cam Smith was back on the practice field today. However, it sounds like the team is still going to bring him back pretty slowly. He ended up going back into the facility during team drills today. Cater Kohu picked off Tua in the situational drill. That's what we said that we were going to come back to. The situation was basically red zone, no timeouts. You're down four. He had to make a play in the end zone. Cater Kohu came down with a leaping, twisting interception on a pass from Tua Tungo Vailoa. I did see one reporter that didn't think he had his feet in on that play. Regardless, the offense didn't score and Kohu made the play. Elijah Campbell was noted for solid back-to-back -back plays today, one coming in the run game, 
where he made a stop after a minimal gain and then followed it up on the next play with a pass breakup on a ball from Tua to River Craycraft. And then finally, a pile of guys with pass breakups today. Saran, Neal, Zeke Vandenberg, Channing Tindall, David Long, Marcus May, all noted for PBUs. And then Ethan Bonner and Jason Maytree, also noted for pass breakup on play specifically between Tua and Tyreek Hill. That is what I have got for today, Miami Dolphins fans. But like I said, we will be back both Tuesday and Wednesday. We're going to have reports from the joint practices between the Miami Dolphins and the Atlanta Falcons leading up to Friday's preseason game. Well, we'll take it from there, Dolphins fans. Like I said, leave your comments. Get subscribed if you have not done so already. And we will be back tomorrow. Until then, Dolphins fans, fins up.